Okay, so you've taken a look at Newton's three laws and have a feel for them. Now, we'll relate them to the types of problems that you'll face in this dynamics unit, in the assignments and tests and such. At this point, you realize that physics isn't about memorizing things, like repeat these three laws. I mean, that's way too simplistic. Save that for other courses. In physics, you have to really understand the laws. What do they mean in the real world? And how do you apply them to real life problems and situations? So let's take a look at this. Newton's first and third law, as you see, are more conceptual. As you solve a bunch of problems, you'll be able to evolve your understanding of these. Now it's Newton's second law. That's the one we really want to focus on right now, as it's the kickoff equation for most of your dynamics problems in this unit, as well as in Physics 12 and any other university courses. For example, let's consider this situation. A car is being driven down the road at a constant velocity of 100 kilometers per hour. So let's start with a free body diagram. We'll draw the car here. And the forces all acting on this car include the car's weight or the force of gravity pushing the car down. And then we also have the normal force. That is the force of the road pushing back up on the car, basically keeping it from falling. Pushing forward on the car, we can draw a force to represent the effective force of the engine propelling the car forward. We'll call it FA for force applied. Now pushing back against this motion is the force of friction. And we'll write it as FF and it represents the wind resistance as well as all the mechanical friction within the engine and bearings and belts and gears and such. We'll just sum these all up into FF. Once we have our free body diagram or FBD finished, we can write Newton's second law here. F net equals MA. Again, this is a great starting point for all your dynamics problems. Let's consider the forces in the vertical direction first. So the vertical forces in our free body diagram include the FG, the force of gravity pushing down, and the FN, the normal force pushing up. Therefore, if we consider up to be positive, then we can write FN positive since it is upwards, and FG would be negative since it's pushing downwards. And on the right side, we have MA, the mass of the car times the acceleration of the car. In the vertical direction, the car is neither moving up nor down, nor is it accelerating up or down. Since it's on a flat road, we would say that the acceleration in the vertical direction is definitely zero. So that means whatever the mass is, being multiplied by zero, it makes the right-hand side all zero. If we rearrange the equation here, that is, we can add the FG to both sides, we can confirm that the normal force equals the gravitational force, Fn equals FG. Or the force on the road is exactly equal to the force of gravity pushing it down, keeping the car from accelerating either up or down. Now that's not terribly surprising, but it's useful to be able to prove this, as we'll learn later. Let's now consider the horizontal direction. Again, like usual, F net equals MA. On the left, the F net, the forces involved from our free body diagram here are the FA, the applied force, and FF, the force of friction. Now let's consider right to be positive, and we can write the FA as positive since it's going to the right, which would make the FF negative. Note that friction force always opposes our motion, so it's often, not always, but often easy to determine the direction of our FF by just looking at the direction of motion and saying it opposes that. Now on the right hand side here, 
what would be the MA? Well, let's see. It says we're going 100 kilometers per hour, and that's pretty fast. But in fact, our speed has nothing to do with this problem. Remember that Newton's laws talk about acceleration, not velocity. In fact, velocity is somewhat meaningless when we're talking about forces. Whether the car is going 10 kilometers per hour or 100 kilometers per hour or even 1,000 kilometers per hour, it doesn't matter to our consideration of dynamics or forces. To better make this point, consider that the car is, in fact, going millions of kilometers per hour. When you consider the rotation of the Earth and the rotation of, around our Sun, rotation of the galaxy, an extra 100 kilometers per hour, plus or minus, doesn't seem terribly meaningful anymore. And it's not. The only thing that matters in our force problems is the change in velocity, or the acceleration. You can also consider it this way. If you fall asleep on a plane and you were to wake up in the dark, you could not tell whether you were moving unless you felt some form of acceleration. Whether you were just sitting still on the runway still, or if you were going 400 kilometers per hour through the sky, you couldn't tell unless there was turbulence forces bumping you around or something. If it was a smooth flight, the velocity wouldn't be detectable. Interesting, eh? Anyways, back to our problem here. If we were to look at our situation, we'd recognize that the velocity doesn't matter, and the only thing that we need to notice is that it's a constant velocity. This means that the velocity isn't changing, which means that the acceleration is zero. No change in velocity means no acceleration. So on the right hand side for MA, we just put zero again. To rearrange, we can add FF to both sides. And in the end, we show that the applied force is equal to the friction force. That is the F net was zero. They balance each other out. The unbalanced force Another name for F net is zero. In these previous examples, the forces bounced and F net was zero. But not all situations have an acceleration of zero. Now, if you first just got into your car that was sitting there and you wanted to speed up to highway speed, well, you would push on the gas and effectively make the applied force FA bigger. And if you pushed on it hard enough, it would become bigger than FF, and you would start to accelerate. The bigger your F net, that is the bigger the difference between FA and FF, the more you'd accelerate, the faster you would get to your 100 kilometers per hour. Now, if you were being more environmentally friendly and you wanted to burn less gas, you would accelerate more gradually. And you would make your FA just a little bigger than the FF. You wouldn't stomp on the gas, you would just push it lightly. And the F net, the difference between the FA and the FF, would be fairly small. But as long as there was a difference you would have acceleration and you'd eventually get up to 100 kilometers per hour. Now, once you're at 100 kilometers per hour, whether you got there quickly or slowly, if you wanted to maintain this speed on the highway, you'd back off the gas a bit, basically allowing FA to drop down until it equals FF. That is, the F net would become zero. The two forces balance each other out now. At this point, the car would stop accelerating. It's neither speeding up nor slowing down. It's going at a constant velocity, just like in our original problem. Your FA, your applied force, would just have to be enough to balance out your FF so that your F net 
would equal zero. You still have to push on the gas to keep them balanced. But that's all. Now, if you eventually wanted to slow your car down and come to a stop, you would take your foot off the gas, essentially dropping FA down below FF. In this case, the F net would now be negative. And a negative F net means that you have a negative acceleration and your speed starts to go down. Remember that a negative acceleration, sometimes called deceleration, just means that the car's velocity is dropping and it'll eventually come to a stop if it keeps decelerating. Taking your foot off the gas and letting the car coast to a stop is certainly one option. The force of friction would eventually bring you to a stop. But if you were coming up to a stop sign or if there was some other reason you were in a rush to come to a stop, we could not only drop our FA by taking the foot off the gas, but we could also increase the FF. Remember that the bigger the F net, that is the difference between the FA and the FF, the greater the acceleration, whether it be positive or negative. So if FA gets smaller, that is our foot off the gas, and FF gets way bigger, then we'll slow down even faster. So how could we increase FF? Right, we hit the brakes. By hitting the brakes, we crank up FF, and therefore having no FA and a large FF, we have a large negative F net. And with a large negative F net, it means we decelerate very quickly. And we slow down and we come screeching to a stop. So those are all the situations that we can come up with here to give you a feel for how F net impacts our acceleration. So in this tutorial, we explored conceptually how we could use Newton's second law along with a good free body diagram to set up the relationships between forces and acceleration. These methods and understanding will prove really useful as we look at other situations and problems.